everybody, Coach Tiffany here. Oh gosh, um, you know, it's been a little challenging for me to get on lately and I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue the Thursday coaching. So um, if you watch this either live or on the replay, please, um, you know, comment whether you're finding value in this or not. Um, I definitely want this group to be full of value. And I know for some, especially mamas, um, it can be challenging to watch videos. I do try to put subtitles on all the videos. So if you're not able to listen to them with sound on, maybe you're um, hanging out with your kiddos and they're watching a cartoon or something and you don't want to have the sound. Um, oh, hey, Jacqueline's on. Hi. Um, I was just talking about whether people are getting value from the Thursday coaching or not. And, um, you know, trying to streamline my process, but also make sure we're getting a lot of value in the group. So um, I always welcome feedback about whether, you know, whether something is helpful or not and um, what topics people are interested in. And if the videos are challenging for some to watch, um, I do try to put subtitles on and that's what I was saying before that I, I try to put subtitles on and, and um, I'm a, not quite caught up right now, but if you go back to some of the other videos, they're all, uh, they're all subtitled. So you can watch them quietly <laughs> if you need to. Maybe you're, um, you know, putting your kiddos down to bed or something and need to be quiet, but want to be able to, you know, do something on your phone. Um, so today, and I wanted to have it printed out. And of course my air printer isn't working, but I have created what I call the happy tummy hunger scale. So um, some of you have maybe, um, the subtitles are great, yeah. So some of you have maybe heard of a hunger scale before. So it's just a scale, usually it's like one through 10 um, to be used to determine or like check in about where we're at in terms of how hungry we are. And so um, I wanted to do one that was a little more fun. So Jacqueline's also a nurse, so she'll be able to relate. There's like the regular pain scale, right? And then there's the funny ones that you see where someone's like arm has been bit off and they're bleeding or whatever. Um, so mine's not quite that extreme, but it's basically actual tummies. Um, so you can kind of see like fullness level, but also um, just, you know, kind of some real life examples of how you might be thinking or feeling when you're at those different levels. So the point of a hunger scale is to um, learn to check in with ourselves about how hungry we are instead of just eating because it's time to eat or eating because, um, you know, you feel like you should or eating, waiting until you're like ravenous and then eating all the things, right? So the point is to really get reacquainted with what our body needs and what our body is telling us. So a one would be like, I am so hungry that I can't even you know, function, right? Like I've been, I've gone way too long without eating. A 10 would be like how you feel after, I would say even beyond Thanksgiving meal, like a meal where you're like, why, why, like I have harmed myself. Like, why did I do this? You might even be to the point of like needing to like throw up, right? So um, you'll see on there that one, they, they've, they have actually been sick. <laughs> so they have like stuff all over their face and um, on the happy um, tummy hunger scale. So, you know, outside of those extremes, where do most of us live? Well, it turns out most women get down to a two or a three, so really very hungry, and then, um, and then they eat beyond the point of where they normally would, so they eat to like an eight or a nine. The goal is really to eat a, when you're right around a three, maybe even a four or a three, so your um, food sounds good, you're hungry, but you're not like so hungry, you're not hangry, right? So then you will be able to be more in touch with what you're eating, actually taste it, enjoy the food, and then only eat to a point of like a seven or maybe an eight, depending. Seven is usually the most comfortable level of fullness, um, but it's you, you might be hungry in like three or four hours if you eat to a seven. So sometimes you might choose to eat to an eight because you know it's gonna be like six hours before I get a chance to eat again or something like that. Um, I find for me, if I don't eat, you know, to either, you know, really solid seven or an eight that I'm hungry, like within a couple hours. And so I, um, you know, timing wise, I usually eat a little bit more. I, I, I had no idea that I actually needed to eat more <laughs> sometimes. So, um, so that's kind of the point of the hunger scale is to get us reacquainted with ourselves and to find that balance. It can also be really helpful in terms of planning. So if you know how long it takes you to get from a four um, in hunger to a three 
to a two, right, where we're like super hangry, um, you know, then you can kind of anticipate like, do I have enough time to wait or do I need a snack? So, you know, if you know it takes you 15 minutes to get from uh, four to a three and then from, you know, 15 minutes to get from a three down to a two, that's only half an hour, right? So you would know as soon as you start to approach a four that you need to start looking for some food um, or just have quick snacks available. Some people, it might, it might be an hour between different levels. So, you know, we're all different in terms of our physiology and, um, and how rapidly we kind of go down, <laughs> go down <hill. laughs> Um, I know my, my nursery friends who are on here, um, will relate because, you know, there's definitely that, like, I'm okay right now when you have a minute to take a break, but you're like, I'm fine. And then, well, if you have a minute to take a break and then, you know, two hours pass and you're like, oh, I'm going to hurt someone. Right. <laughs> And you just have to like step into the med room and eat a bar really quick or whatever it is. So um, less than ideal. So sometimes even if we're not hungry, we might eat because we do have time to take a break, especially, you know, if you live in the corporate world or in the medical field, something like that, where you have to kind of take breaks when you need to. Um, and just kind of anticipating those things and, and checking in with yourself about how long does it take me to move from one point to the next? And um, what are the things that are gonna keep me more sustained, right? So um, if you know that, you know, you've got five hours between now and the next meal, you might wanna make sure that you get extra fat or extra protein in, because those are gonna, you know, make, they're, they're gonna increase your steady level. So how satisfied you are, how long you stay full. So I'd love it if you check out the hunger scale. I'd love any feedback. This is um, the first official publishing of it. Um, my hubby helped me make it and, um, you know, we really wanted it to be playful and fun, but informative and useful. So if you have any um, ideas on any tweaks that we can make, I'd be happy to, um, you know, consider them and maybe incorporate some of them. And really, you know, anything that we can do to get more in touch with our body and listen to what our body is telling us rather than, you know, this kind of external idea or should around what we should eat or when we should eat or how much we should eat. Um, is going to help us to heal our relationship with food. So, you know, one of the things that was a complete surprise to me when I started using the hunger scale was that I would eat an arbitrary amount of food. So I would put some on my plate and then I would take it to the dining room table. So it's pretty good about that. I would actually put my food in a dish or on a plate usually and sit down to eat it. Um, but when I I would either just kind of get bored halfway through the meal and stop eating or I would just finish the plate and a lot of times I actually, or the bowl, um, a lot of times I actually wasn't full or satisfied. I just was like, oh, the food's on my plate's gone, so I'm just done now. <laughs> um, so I really wasn't eating completely to fullness, so it made sense that I was getting hungry all the time because I wasn't full or satisfied. Um, so that was really interesting. I mentioned earlier that I, I was surprised to discover that I actually needed to eat more sometimes. So, you know, you may be surprised what you find. I was also really surprised to find how quickly I went from, you know, one level to, the, to another, um, both in hunger and in fullness. So not only did I go quickly from a four down to a two where I was like hangry and couldn't think, um, but I also would go quickly from, you know, a six to a seven to an eight, right, to a nine. So I really had to be intentional and slow down my think, my, you know, actually intake of food and think about, hey, how am I getting full? And sometimes I would find if I were, if I were at a six, um, I, I would just even feeling the food in my stomach, I felt like maybe I was getting full. But actually, if I waited a little bit, I would discover that um, I, sorry, my phone, everything's, <laughs> all these alarms are happening on my phone and my computer. Um, anyway, if I waited a little bit, that actually sometimes I still did have some room to eat a little bit more, um, that I just really, the feeling of food in my stomach was kind of weird to me, and so I thought that meant I was full. There's food in there, um, which is also funny. It, it's amazing to me how detached I was from that, um, those signals that are you know, we're born with them, but um, when we're little babies and little kiddos, our families often um, well-intentionally, well-intentioned, 
say like, oh, eat a few more bites. You didn't get enough food, right? And so they're worried that we're not going to eat enough or eat enough veggies or enough variety. So they try to encourage us to eat more. And so, you know, we kind of get disconnected from those signals over time. And then when we become adults, especially as women, we're kind of told like, oh, your hunger isn't that much of a priority, you know, other things are a priority, right? So if you're hungry, you should just ignore that and push through until it's time to eat or until somebody doesn't need you or whatever it is, right? Um, especially if you're a mom, like people, there's kind of constant demands um, and other people's hunger tends to take priority over our own. So, you know, learning that first you should eat more, don't listen to how full you are, right? And then learning like you should eat less or your hunger or your desire for food is a bad thing. It's inconvenient or it's causing you to gain weight or whatever it is. So we kind of tend to have this like really strange relationship with our hunger. And it's just a normal biological process, right? <laughs> There's a reason that our body gives us those signals. So if we can learn to honor them and listen to them in real time, then, you know, when we get down to a four or a three and we eat, then we just eat until we're full. And it can be a lot less stressful and a lot less um, kind of adversarial. So, um, yeah, honoring those hunger signals. Not to mention, then we don't get hangry, right? Nobody wants to feel that way. <laughs> so, and we also don't want to feel that like sick feeling of having overeaten. Um, and when I am in touch with my hunger signals, I'm better about that. But there's times when I still, you know, maybe I didn't eat well through the daytime. I didn't get enough food. I might eat, right, kind of frantically because that's the body giving you those hunger signals. And then, you know, I may eat to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm a little uncomfortable. I don't really like that, right? So at that point, it's important to remove judgment and just notice like what happened. Oh, well, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't eat enough today or I went too long without eating or um, maybe, you know, you've had a lot of stress and so your cortisol's up and you might be kind of doing some self-soothing soothing, or perhaps you're eating something, certain things that might be harder to tell how hungry or full you are, right? Um, so some things can kind of disrupt that natural um, satiety signal that we get. The other thing is that, um, you know, we may have been eating in a way that was really distracted. So we might have been driving, like eating, you know, fast food or something, right? Like french fries, burger, milkshake, and then we get there and we're like, oof. <laughs> or, you know, some people really struggle if they're watching TV or something like that. So. Um, you know, for me, I try to eat in an environment that's less distracting, but, you know, we kind of have our phones around all the time. So lately I've been trying to not eat with my phone, <laughs> which is, you know, something I struggle with. So anyway, the hunger signal is really just designed to get us back in touch with our bodies, honor those messages our bodies are giving us, and, um, and learn, you know, use them as a tool to really learn what works for us and what doesn't, and um, explore what will work instead. It's one of the first things that I used. It's a great tool. And um, again, I posted it in the group. So it's in there, but I'll post it in the comments as well. And I would love to hear feedback on that. So um, if you have found this to be helpful, I would love to hear from you. Um, you know, let me know if there's any topics that you want me to cover in the future. If you want me to keep the Thursday live coaching around, um, I may instead do a group Zoom event where people can register and then hop on um, like once a month, something like that. And we can actually do like one-on-one -on -one coaching. The only challenge with that is that, um, you know, it's not HIPAA, like it's not HIPAA compliant, right? Like there's other people in the room, confidentiality. I can't, I can request that people keep things confidential, but um, you know, it's up to each individual to hold honor that. And so um, I can't guarantee that. So that would be one thing that I could be offering instead. Um, but really, I just have loved this group so far. Everyone in here is somebody that I um, have respect for and or were invited by a friend that you know felt they would be a really good fit for the group. And the women in here have just been really, um, you know, really, amazing and um, people are participating a lot and I really appreciate that. So I think I mentioned on a, maybe Monday that I'm going to start highlighting a member each week. So somebody who's really active and engaged and involved in the group, but also somebody, um, you know, just 
the amazing things that they're doing in the world. So um, the list is already long of who, <laughs> of people I wanna highlight. So it's gonna be a little while before I'm um, through that list. But um, but yeah, I definitely wanna, I wanna acknowledge and let you know that I do appreciate your involvement and in the group and, um, and all the things you're trying to do in the world. Because the real reason that I do this is that I just, I, I think it's tragic that we spend so much time and energy worrying about food, trying to control our food and um, feeling bad about it, beating ourselves up when that energy really should be, you know, put into nourishing ourselves, making ourselves a priority, but then also like just doing the things we want to do in the world, um, being, you know, being our best selves and um, being leaders because with what's everything that's happening right now, we really need women who are taking care of themselves, who feel good about themselves, who aren't like spending time beating themselves up and um, you know, who have the energy that they need, the stamina that they need to lead us through this time. So that's my motivation. And um, I think you all are amazing. This, this group is just full of really um, incredible people. So thank you for being here. Have a great day.